It's a fast yes. car. It's a very fast car. <laughs> it's not just fast, it's a classic. There's just so much emotion tied up in these beautiful old cars. But is technology actually saving classic cars? We need to break down the car, take all the measurements that are important to us. We can translate them into CAD. Two or three weeks later, we get a physical part. You lifting me up. All right, I'm in. And that's the part that allows us to mount the motor up to the original transmission. So this literally is a Tesla battery. Well, yes, and so these are our own boxes, but this is a Tesla module. There's no question about how these cars affect us as art form. And I love the idea of preserving that. When I'm driving this car, I'm driving the car and it makes me feel like I'm in control and it makes me feel a little bit more powerful because I can choose what gear I'm in, I can choose how fast I go, I literally have to turn the blinker on and turn the blinker off. I feel connected and I kind of miss that in my everyday driving. What is the reaction when people pull back the layer and realize the old classic you're driving it's has new? this totally innovative motor inside. Oh, they get super excited. Like, oh, I want to see that. And then you pop it open and then they look at it and then the very next question is, where's the engine? We'll take a look. That old engine isn't there anymore. Terry Taylor's 1978 Datsun's gone through a modern revival. It had 80,000 original miles and that's it. My dad owned a service station when I was a kid and I grew up literally putting myself up and down on the racks. It's unfortunately rare. Yeah. Because girls do grow up and around fourth or fifth grade, they're told girls aren't good at math, girls aren't good at science, girls don't like cars. My parents, for some reason, forgot to tell me that. And so I just loved it. She did. Terry still loves cars. She's worked on and driven classics her whole life. And eventually, she started a career at Nissan. It was awesome. And it was like the best job. I, it's every little boy's dream. Um, and I like I feel privileged to have ever worked there. I learned from Terry that Datsun is owned by Nissan. She's since left that job, but when she bought her car, she definitely bought a Nissan brand and the engine worked just fine. So why go through the trouble of pulling the engine out and replacing it with an electric motor? I mean, I think the writing's on the wall, right? The internal combustion engine is only going to be around so long. The, the performance characteristics of electric motors are far superior. I really hope that that doesn't mean we have to give up these beautiful, iconic cars. That's Mark Davis, and like Terry, this guy is all about cars, especially his dark blue Alfa Romeo. So, so after you get the car, two days later, you're on the side of the road fixing the fuel pump. Was that the moment that you said, all right, I'm pulling out the motor and I, turning it electric. If, if there was any qualms I had about it, that certainly sealed the deal. <laughs> so he quit his job and founded Moment Motor Co. in Austin, Texas. I would have so much more regret if I didn't do it than if I did do it and it didn't work. His goal? Preserve history's most iconic rides by re-equipping them with today's most iconic technology. Added bonus. In the car world, that technology also happens to be more reliable and more green. Fundamentally, there is a, uh, a, a challenge in owning and maintaining classic vehicle that not everybody is up for. Uh, I know how to fix all the things on these cars, but there's still a base level of anxiety when you're driving down the road and you go, What's that smell? Am I gonna, is this, why is it making that noise? Am I gonna stall out here again? Am I gonna have to call another tow truck? There's just so much emotion uh, kind of tied up in these beautiful old cars that you wanna preserve that. And uh, that's what I'm hoping we're doing. When a car comes in, the team performs an auto surgery of sorts. Nice work, Kevin. They pull out everything that relied on gas. Then they design. Since each model has a different engine compartment, each electric motor has to be specifically built to fit inside. And that motor needs batteries. If I pull one of these out, you can kind of see this is a Tesla module. More modules means the car can go faster and farther on each charge. What this represents is kind of the, the most advanced battery technology that's on the market. And so instead of trying to make up for that, <laughs> we simply get um, Tesla modules out of either reclaimed or, or, or wrecked cars. Mark showed me the cars he's worked on so far. A vintage Porsche, two BMWs, the Datsun, his Alfa Romeo, 
and a 1987 Mini Cooper. Stephanie Behrens bought her Mini the day her mother died after an eight-year battle with ALS. Stephanie had been her primary caretaker and used money passed down to pay for the car. I think she would have been happy that that's what I, I use the money to do because um, it gives me such joy to do. That's a little cap um, and it will work with all of the sort of normal charging stations. And get this, before buying their classics, both Stephanie and Terry already had electric cars at home for everyday use, but they say this route is better. There is a segment of, of classic car people who really just can't get their head around this. They just don't like it. They feel like you're altering the, these original art forms and you're doing something that is not um, acceptable. Are you, in your private life, environmentally conscious? I am not somebody who is obsessed with it, right? So yes, I recycle. Yes, I compost. Yes, I try to be energy efficient in, in my house. Um, but you didn't get into this no, I didn't. to save gas. That wasn't it, no. What does it cost to do this? I'd say the at the bare minimum, you're talking fifty to $60,000, and then it kind of goes up from there. It depends on, you know, do you want more horsepower? Do you want more, you know, do you want uh, longer range? No doubt it's expensive but most innovative tech is, or at least starts out that way. Most cars, Mark says, take between three to six months to convert. After they're done, some states require an inspection before they hit the road. In some cases, the fuel efficient engine makes owners eligible for a tax credit. It tells me I've got 74% left. There's no question about how these cars affect us as art form. I think that uh, by allowing these cars to kind of live on into the future, we are enabling generations to see and appreciate uh, an art form that arguably is dying. So if you can pass down that beautiful piece of machinery, that beautiful piece of design, but make it work and make it still usable, I think that's, I, there's a, a beauty in that, I think. A very forward thinking beauty in that.